Buyers and sellers alike often have questions regarding earnest money. Today, we're going to take a look at earnest money and help answer several questions, including what is earnest money, how much is the right amount of earnest money, and if the contract falls through, who keeps the earnest money? And we're doing it right now on your Monday Morning Marcus Minute. We're going to start off by answering the question, what is earnest money? When a buyer makes an offer on a property and the buyer and seller agree to the terms, the buyer, in most cases, is required to put down a certain amount of earnest money. This is essentially a good faith deposit showing the seriousness from the buyer for purchasing the property. This money does not go directly to the seller. In fact, at closing, the amount of money in your earnest money deposit is applied to your down payment. And if you're selling a property and was hoping to get your hands on this free money, it doesn't work quite like that. In most cases, this earnest money is used to open an insured escrow account and is ultimately held by an escrow agent, which here in the Kansas City area is typically a title company. This leads us to another question. How much money is the right amount of money for a buyer to include in their earnest money deposit? Now, every situation is different. However, if you're one of my buyer clients or you follow me on social media, then you may be familiar with my five-step buying process where I always recommend to my clients to pay 1% of the purchase price as earnest money. For example, if you're making an offer for $500,000, the amount of earnest money you would pay would be $5,000. The reason I recommend 1% earnest money deposit has a lot to do with the current real estate market. In many cases, we're seeing multiple offers and bidding wars. In times when offers may be very similar, the seller may be impressed by the amount of earnest money a buyer is willing to put down and may go with that offer over others. Since the earnest money is applied toward the down payment on the property, this is not a loss for the buyer and shows the seller just how serious a buyer truly is. Now, because every situation is different, 1% may be too much or even too little. You'll need to consult the expert advice from your real estate professional. You're also welcome to call me. I'm always happy to help guide people in the right direction. The next question I'm going to help answer is this. Can a buyer lose their earnest money deposit? And what happens with the money? But before I answer this, I'd love to invite you to click the like button below on this video if you find it informative. I'd also love to invite you to subscribe to my channel. We're always doing what we can to help provide value to people who are buying, selling, and investing in real estate. People just like you. Now, where was I? Oh, yeah. Can a buyer lose their earnest money deposit, and what happens with the money? The residential real estate sell contract, recognized and maintained by the Kansas City Regional Association of Realtors, outlines the responsibilities of both the buyers and the sellers. Now, I could go through line by line of paragraph 21 of the real estate sell contract, reading all the specifics of earnest money and additional deposits, then follow that up with the defaults and remedies in paragraph 14. But if you stuck with me until now, you would most definitely lose interest when I start getting into all the legal jargon. Instead, let me sum it up for you here in a manner that's much easier to understand. If the buyer defaults on any portion of the contract and the contract is terminated for a reason that is not allowed per the contract, the buyer may lose their earnest money, which may be paid out to the seller, depending on the agreement between the seller and the selling brokerage. Now, on that same note, if the seller defaults on the contract for a reason that's not approved or acceptable in the contract and the contract is terminated, the buyer will not only get their earnest money back, but may also pursue in any remedy or damages available by law or in equity. Now that said, I'm a Missouri and Kansas licensed realtor, not an attorney. If you're buying or selling real estate and you're faced with a default in the contract, I'd strongly recommend speaking with an attorney who can help guide you through your specific situation. Now, if you or a friend or family member are planning to buy, sell, or invest in real estate, anywhere in or around the Kansas City metropolitan area, I would be happy to help guide you through the entire process. Feel free to reach out to me by phone or text. My phone number is 816-332-1116. 
My team of real estate professionals and myself, we're here for you. We're your one step to a successful real estate experience. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.